My name is uh, Charles Haynes, and I direct the Religious Freedom Education Project here at the museum on behalf of the First Amendment Center. So I want to welcome you to the Annenberg Theater here at the museum. And I want to thank you for participating in what promises to be a lively and informative dialogue this evening. We are streaming live, so we also want to welcome our online audience. Uh, and anyone in our virtual audience who wants to ask a question should feel free to tweet it to us uh, using the hashtag Truth on Islam. Let me begin with just a word of thanks to the wonderful partners we've had in putting this program together, Unity Productions Foundation, Wesley Theological Seminary, the Faith and Politics Institute, and the Institute for Social Policy and Understanding. We're deeply grateful for their help and support in putting this program together tonight. Well, our aim is very simple tonight. It's to provide as many answers as time permits to some of the frequently asked questions about Islam and Muslims in America. As you know, uh, over the past decade, acts of terrorism by extremist groups acting in the name of Islam have created confusion and raised fears about the true nature of Islam. And in the United States, some individuals and groups have conflated Islam and terrorism by disseminating misinformation and distortions about Islam and Muslim Americans. So we hope that by providing accurate information about Islam and Muslims in the United States, all the sponsors join me in hoping that this will help us to uphold our commitment to religious freedom in the United States and contribute to a climate of understanding and respect across all of our differences. We'll begin the program tonight with a film, My Fellow American, a brief film that was produced by Unity Productions Foundation. And then following the film, we will hear from Alex Cronemer, who is the co-founder of UPF. And then we'll move right to the panel and your questions. At the conclusion of the evening, Alex will come back and give us some guidance on good resources for creating further understanding and for taking action in our own communities. So now we'll show the film. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to welcome everyone uh, on behalf of Unity Productions Foundation uh, for being here this evening. Uh, I'm looking forward to tonight's discussion, and I want to say I, I'm actually personally grateful uh, to be able to participate in this discussion. Uh, the video that you just saw was actually inspired by an event that happened in my life a few years ago. Uh, my son, uh, younger son, was then in 10th grade. It was a Sunday afternoon, and uh, he had wrestling practice. So, he had to go to, but he's a big Redskins fan. And he was uh, watching the game, and the Redskins were at the 20-yard line when, when we just had to leave, uh, or he'd be late, and I and sort of had to manhandle him out the door. And we got in the car, and as soon as we were in there, he was um, you know, immediately saying, oh, you know, turn on the radio, turn on the radio. And, you know, it, was, it was kind of cute. I mean, he was young and naive, and thought it was possible the Redskins actually might have scored. Um, <laughs> But uh, so driving down the road, I was uh, t you know, tuning the, uh, uh, the dial on the AM frequency looking for uh, Redskins radio to find out what had happened and came across this one uh, station where there was a uh, radio host who was <clears throat> in, in, in a one breathless phrase, uh, conflated all Muslims with Osama bin Laden, uh, said that American Muslims should have their civil rights stripped of them and anyone who disagreed wasn't a patriotic American. And I forgot for a moment my son was sitting next to me, and in case you can't tell by my name, we're Muslims. Uh, and I was just listening to this for another minute, and suddenly I remembered there he was. And I looked over to him, and I could see he was deeply uh, in shock by what we were hearing. And I, I didn't know how to react. I just turned the dial and, and didn't say anything, dropped him off, and sort of stewed on it. Uh, while he was at practice. And when he came back into the car, I was ready to talk. I really wanted to engage him about this. But when I brought it up, he didn't want to talk about it. And I could tell he was in pain. Uh, he just really didn't feel like he could discuss it. And it made me realize that the damage from that was already done. And 
when you think about it, almost every single Muslim in this audience tonight, in one way or the other, has a similar story. You know, 9-11, uh, the two wars uh, that were fought, uh, various criminal acts by um, homegrown crazies and radicals have given people a justified sense of fear. But at the same time, it's also created a lot of opportunity for careless and I would say even opportunistic rhetoric that seeks to exploit that fear, deepen it, uh, and, and to extend it to blanket all, you know, the, the vast majority of peaceful Muslims in the world and in the United States who just want to raise their families, earn a living, and make contributions to this country like everybody else. But as we know, we're living in very polarizing times. And the public discourse, just about any issue, uh, is the cause for uh, a great deal of aggressive, uh, I wouldn't even call it debate, because it's not that we're even seeking anymore to convince people of our point of view, but it's more like we want to defeat them, humiliate them, demonize them. The belief in the goodwill, you know, that, that we're all in this together somehow has, has been lost. And so what we hope to do with this film that we made was just to remind people that behind the demonizing rhetoric are, are, are real people. You know, a Muslim fireman, a, a, uh, a Muslim doctor, the Muslim mom down the street, my son. They're all real people. So I am very grateful to be able to be a part of this this evening, to share this film, uh, and to uh, be a part of tonight's discourse. Because there's one thing for sure. We, in this country, are at a crossroads. And the crossroads is whether we are going to let this angry rhetoric that so dominates the public square right now, or we're going to allow it to divide us and make us into ever smaller groups where we only seek the opinions of people like us to confirm our already pre-established belief and prejudices, narrowing what it means, our definition of what it means to be an American, or whether we're going to be able to come together to embrace our diversity and, yes, our differences and broaden the definition of what that means. That has always been the thing that has made America great. That's the America I'm uh, th that I believe in, and that's why I'm so looking forward to uh, tonight's uh, uh, discussion. And I um, want to thank you all again for being here. Take care.